Friends, hello. I'm going to draw two graphs for you. These are going to be very similar to the FRQs, but hopefully it's helpful for you. I'm going to try to work out the logic as I go. So here we go. Graph number one off of your stab. Draw an ADAS extended model that starts at full employment, then shows the impact of a decrease in net exports. Okay, so this is just review from last unit. So over here, I'm going to put in price level. Down here, I'm going to put in GDP. GDP. Uh, it's going to be real GDP. Then I put in my long run aggregate supply, which is sort of a vertical curve. I'm trying to draw with the mouse here, so just hang tight. Down here is going to be my full employment GDP, so QF. Pop in my aggregate demand. Da, 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 da. And I know I'm starting at full employment. So I want this to be a triple intersection. I put in my aggregate supply. I have my triple intersection right here. I dash over, sort of, and that gives me my price level. And I've got my first point. Now I always uh, letter these so that I can keep them straight. So I've got point A. Now over here is going to be my Phillips curve. So I'm going to call this inflation. I'm just going to put an I, but know that that stands for inflation. Down here, this is unemployment. I know I have a vertical curve called the LRPC, which stands for Long Run Phillips Curve, LRPC. And I know this is going to be at the nominal, or not nominal, sorry, natural rate of unemployment, NRU, which is the same as full employment GDP. It's just looking at the unemployment rate. And then I have my inverse relationship on my short run Phillips curve. So I label this SRPC. I'm ready to go. And my first point is going to be at equilibrium, right? Because at full employment, I'm going to be at the natural rate of unemployment. And so I'm going to show point A at the equilibrium as well. So there we go. I've got point A. Now, let's get a different color for this next part. It says show what happens if net exports fall. Net exports are falling. That's part of aggregate demand. So aggregate demand is shifting to the left. Again, this is just review from last unit. So I'm going to put 82. We have a new equilibrium point down here. We dash over. Price level fell, so we call this PL2. It went down, right? And then GDP also fell. We call this Q2. It went down. Now we have to ask a couple of questions before we can figure out where this went, right? First, what happened to inflation? Well, what happened to inflation is price level went down, so inflation is going down. So if I'm tracking it here, I went down. It really helps to draw these arrows because you're thinking about it logically. You're like, okay, what happened to price level? How's that impact inflation? And then you draw the arrow so you know you're going in the right direction. Then what happened to GDP went down. So what's that do to unemployment? Well, GDP and unemployment have an inverse, I should do this, inverse relationship, meaning when GDP rises, unemployment falls. But in this case, when GDP falls, unemployment rises because businesses are laying more people off. So I know unemployment's on this x-axis. Rising is to go to the right. And so I went down, I went right, dun, 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 and I've got my new point, point B. Now I dash down, I get my unemployment rate one, I dash over, I get my inflation one, and I've shown accurately a recessionary gap. It should make some sense because the unemployment rate is higher than the natural rate of unemployment. That's how a recession is shown. Excuse me. All right. So now I need to show this next part. Self-correct the ADAS model. So I'm going to change colors here so you can see. Now, if we leave it alone, supply takes it home. So we know our supply is going to shift back to get us to full employment GDP, right? Because resource prices are falling. So we shift this curve to the right. It intersects right here. That's a terrible aggregate supply curve, but whatever. We got a new point right here. So this is A, that's B, this is C right here. So how do I show C? Well, again, I look at what happened to inflation, what happened to GDP. I have a new price level here, and then I went back to full employment GDP there. So what happened to inflation? Inflation went down again, right? So it continues to fall. What about unemployment? What happened to that? Well, 
my GDP went up. We know there's an inverse relation between GDP and unemployment. So if GDP went up, that means unemployment went down. If they're both going down, what's happening? Well, I come over here, I draw my arrows. I got down and I've got down, right? Inflation is going down. Unemployment is going down. I know I wind up back at full employment right here, right? So I have to be back at the natural rate of unemployment. How do I get there? I got there through a shift. We call this S R P C two. That's it, right? So we go from A to B to C. So that's how you do this when you have a recessionary gap. Show aggregate demand shifting left, which is movement along the curve to the right, showing a recession, high unemployment, low inflation. And then I know aggregate supply shifts to the right in the self-correction. When aggregate supply shifts right, short run Phillips curve shifts left because both inflation and unemployment are going to be going down. All right, let's move on to the next one. So that could be your FRQ, or it could be this one. An inflationary gap with self-correction. Let's try it out. So we got price level here. Got GDP down here. And this is real GDP. Got our long run aggregate supply, which is very straight. <laughs> we have our downward sloping aggregate demand, AD. And we know we're starting at an inflationary gap. What's that mean? Well, that means I'm not starting at triple intersection. I need my GDP to be greater than my full employment, which is right here. So I need to show my intersection right there. So we call that aggregate supply. So we intersection of those two, that's where I'm actually starting, right? I have an inflationary gap. My current GDP, Q1, is beyond full employment GDP. I'm producing at too high of a rate. I'm overheating my economy. Now, how do I show this on the Phillips curve? Let me get a different color here. On the Phillips curve, our Y to the sky axis is labeled inflation. Our X axis is labeled unemployment. We've got our long run Phillips curve, LRPC. And it's always at the natural rate of unemployment. And then we have our downward sloping short run Phillips curve. And I need to start at an inflationary gap. Well, how do I show that? Well, I know my GDP is high, is beyond full employment GDP, which means that my current unemployment rate must be less than the natural rate of unemployment, right? In order to produce at that higher rate, <clears throat> I have to employ people that weren't employed before. Very important. So I know it's going to be over here. And then I also know an inflationary gap price level has been rising. So inflation should be high. So I show point A ooh, right here or anywhere to the left of this equilibrium, right? So my unemployment rate is going to be low and my inflation rate, sorry, these are intersecting here. My inflation rate one is going to be high. All right. Next up, it says show the self-correction of the economy. How's the economy self-correct? Let me get a different marker here. Well, leave it alone. Supply takes you home, right? So if I'm right here, inflationary gap is causing resource costs to go up, unemployment or sorry, wages to go up, right? So as a result of those increasing resource prices, our supply is going to shift left. When it does, it gets us back to triple intersection. I'll call this AS2. And then... We've got to make a really big equilibrium point there because I missed totally. And we'll call that point P. So how do I show that same thing with my Phillips curve? Well, first, I ask those basic questions again. What happened to inflation? Well, here, inflation, price level went up. So inflation is actually rising. So if inflation is rising from here, I have to show that by pushing up from my current point. But when GDP fell, it went from Q1 back to QF, unemployment rose, right? So my unemployment is going up as well. So both of them are rising. So up and up. I know I'm back at full employment, so my point is going to be on the curve. How do I get to the curve? Sorry, got interrupted, so I don't know what that looks like for you guys. But Anyways, so the point is on the curve because I'm back at full employment, back at the natural rate of unemployment. How do I get there? I get there through shifting 
my curve. So SRPC2 has occurred. I've shifted the curve to the right. So in other words, when aggregate demand is beyond, when I have an inflationary gap, that's going to be shown as a point on the top of the slide. Right? Inflation is high. It's going to be high up on the curve. Think of that high and high, right? And then when average supply corrects by shifting left, just like cost push inflation, that's going to cause both price level and unemployment to rise. When both things are going up, it's going to shift the curve to the right, back to full employment, at the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, so that's the other side. It is possible that you'll have an inflationary gap. You might have to start with an inflationary gap. You might have to start with a triple intersection and then go to an inflationary gap. Um, but that's, that's basically the gist of it. That's about as difficult as this Phillips curve gets. All right, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Just another resource for you. And uh, yeah, I'll post this for you guys and, and uh, good luck on the test tomorrow. Thanks.